And now, a fireside chat with Arthur Bergeron. Hi, I'm Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 68 of us uh, at the law firm. I do nothing but elder law. Uh, and I started this series of uh, question and answer call-in uh, pro programs uh, in order to help deal with specific questions that I typically can't answer when I do the seminars that I so often do at local councils on aging. So uh, I think the lines are open and we're waiting for another call. Hello again, Mr. Bergeron. It's me again, Mary. How are you? Mary, I'm great. How are you? I'm okay, but my older sister's husband just died. Now she wants to make sure her house is safe if she needs nursing home care down the road. I told her I knew you, so I would call. What should she do? Mary, by the way, I'm sorry that you're kind of distraught over your, over your sister um, and her husband. This is a really common question. I often get folks who come in or people who come in where their spouse just died and they are now trying to make sure their assets are protected in the event they need nursing home care. They often come in with their kids to try to figure this out. Um, unfortunately, one of the things I have to tell them is that their best option, which was to have assets in their spouse's name at the time of his or her death and have, a, have them have a will which, had, which would have left everything to them in a testamentary trust, is now no longer available. And so now um, your sister, like a lot of people who come to talk to me, is stuck with kind of traditional uh, asset protection planning. Um, what, what has to drive what she does is the fact that if she needs to apply for Mass Health, which is the Massachusetts name for the Medicaid program, because she wants to qualify for Mass Health so that Mass Health will pay, once she is qualified, the difference between her income from Social Security and pension and whatever the nursing home bill is. If she wants to qualify for Mass Health um, while, while protecting the assets she has, she has to be able to show Mass Health that she did not own those assets for at least five years. That's the famous five-year look-back period. So at this point, depending on what Mary's assets are, um, she's going to, she, whatever she wants to protect permanently, she's going to need to transfer out to somebody uh, and then wait five years. Now, most of my clients um, have assets that consist primarily of their home, which is typically worth three or four hundred thousand dollars, and the rest, which is typically IRAs, 401ks, maybe some cash in the bank, a variety of different things. And most of them will tell me when they're in this situation, as your sister is now, if they're still healthy, they're very nervous about losing control of their money. They want to know they can still get to the bank at any time and withdraw it. So let me talk about two alternatives that your sister may have if on the one hand she wants to make sure that some of these assets are protected for her kids because she probably wants to leave them to her kids after she dies. While at the same time, knowing that she's not going to lose any sleep because she doesn't have any money in the bank. So the, the easiest thing to do in that case is to deal with the house because Mary can or your, your sister can own the house effectively or you have the use of the house while still protecting it for mass health purposes. All she has to do is transfer an interest in the house called the remainder interest or what remains of her interest in the house after she dies to her kids or to an irrevocable trust for the benefit of her kids. Now, the least expensive thing for her to be doing is to transfer this interest to her kids. She would do this through a deed. She would, she would in that deed, retain a so-called life estate in the property, that is, total control of the property as long as she's alive, together with the obligation to pay the taxes and the insurance. Um, this way, she know, nobody can throw her out. She's got total, she's, she is in the same position that she is right now. Um, but having transferred the remainder of the property out, she would know that if she died the next day after she tr did that transfer, her interest in the property, the life estate, would evaporate, leaving her kids, um, for, for example, as the sole owners of that house. By the way, this, this, this uh, structure of things also has the advantage of allowing um, your sister to assure that following her death, the house will not have to go through the so-called probate process. The only disadvantage, or there are a couple of disadvantages of doing things this way. One 
If Mary, after she has done this, decides to sell the house, well then, the capital gains exemption that she would normally get worth $250,000, um, resulting from the fact that she's lived in the house for at least two years and owned the house, would then only apply to the life estate portion of the value of the house being sold, which is typically, if your sister is over 80, say, um, that value is probably going to be about 20% of the value of the house. The rest of the value may very well be subject to the capital gains tax. And if your sister uh, and her former husband bought that house a long time ago, there may be a substantial capital gains tax. If that is an issue, or if Mary is concerned that she doesn't want to, as an ongoing matter, ever have to deal with all of her kids at the same time while she's alive, in the event that, say, she wants to mortgage the property or, or decides to sell the property, or if she's afraid there may be disputes among the kids after her death regarding the sale of the property. Then, instead of transferring this remainder interest directly to her kids, she should transfer it to an irrevocable trust, a trust that she does not have control over, a trust which probably names the child she trusts the most. I always tell people that's why they call them trusts. You have to trust the trustee. She transfers it to the child she trusts the most. The rules of the trust would be, she would transfer that trustee this remainder interest. Um, she would specify that following her death, the trustee on uh, would sell the property and divide up the proceeds in whatever way she thought was appropriate. But that way she could be sure that the only person she had to deal with was that child who was the trustee in the event that she later wants to sell or mortgage the property. The other advantage of doing it this way is that as long as we structure the trust correctly, we can structure the trust as a so-called grantor taxable trust so that in the event that she does need to sell the house, she will not be subject or none of the value will be subject to the capital gains tax because for tax purposes, she will be considered to own the whole house, even though for mass health purposes, she will only be considered to own the, the, the so-called life estate value in the house. Now, once Mary has created that irrevocable trust, and, 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 and transferred that remainder interest into it, she may decide that in addition to that, she wants to transfer some of her cash to the trustee. But if she's concerned that she could never get the cash back, she should understand that there would be a provision in that trust saying that the trustee could, in the trustee's discretion, distribute some of the trust assets to one or more of the beneficiaries during her lifetime. As long as your sister trusts the trustee, she can then trust that if, if your sister needs some money later on, that that trustee could then distribute some of that money to herself or to himself or to one of the other children with the knowledge that, that, uh, that she or he or the other children would then transfer that money back to her, gift the money back to her in case she needed it. Now I know that all sounds complicated, so your sister ought to talk to an elder law attorney before she starts going down any of these roads because she wants to make sure that this is the right strategy for her. Remember, the goal of all of this is to not lose sleep at night. Um, but if your sister is interested in this, she should go talk to an elder law attorney. I'm one of those. So thank you, Mary, for your call in. Uh, thank you all for watching today. Um, and I look forward to seeing you uh, in the next one of our call-in programs. Thank you very much.